I was also thinking how crazy it is that people get worked up when vegans put animals and humans on the same level. But then if you understand mm. anything about science, you'll understand that humans are animals. So that's not really a far stretch at all. But then people are more than happy to compare animals to plants or to compare themselves to lions. You know, so yeah. it's sure, such a double sure, standard. It's, it's an insane double standard that we're dealing with. Yeah. I wonder, you know, these justifications people make, do they actually really mean a lot of them or literally are just all of them excuses? So, for example, when you hear someone say something like, you know, what about lions or, you know, plants feel pain or blah, blah, blah. Do, to what extent are those arguments they're making their actual, do they have conviction in and they're actually using as a serious argument that they think is rational? And what extent do you think, no, it is just a psychological deflection of the issue and they actually know they don't have a case, so they're using these as rationalizations to try and excuse their behavior? I, I think that humans will entertain a lie if a lie is more entertaining than the truth. And mm. it doesn't take much to entertain someone who's searching for a way to solidify their denialism. Yes. I mean, there's the saying, isn't there? Something like, would you rather have the, the convenient lie or the inconvenient truth? Yeah. More people are inclined to choose the convenient lie. Yeah. No matter how but absurd it, it is. That's a word convenient I don't think we even need to be to be acting like veganism is some kind of inconvenience it's not um, it is really so easy once you get started and you just wonder how how you'd have ever thought it was difficult before the hard part is dealing with people people are the inconvenience <laughs> they're walking into a shop and choosing from the 10 plant based milks they've got in there or choosing from the however many hundred fruits and vegetables they've got in there, yeah. or the grains, that's not inconvenient. It's having to deal with the constant bullshit from other people. That's my inconvenience. Yeah, that's true. When people, but when people are going vegan, I think essentially they the inconvenience is having to deal with their own hypocrisy. It's un it's uncomfortable for an mm. individual to realize that they're their justifications are complete and utter nonsense. Yes. So they're almost their own inconvenience. Yeah. So that's the, that's the that's convenience, cool. but it, it's actually empowering once you overcome that. It's in, like with anything, you know, once you face something and you, you go through that challenging time of like, it's never going to be convenient. Let's be honest. I said this to a guy once who was, who was a friend. Um, He's like, oh, we can talk about this offline, like when I brought up some really pressing issues with him online. And I said, let's be honest, yeah. man, it's never going to be convenient. Like he was trying to schedule it for later on, but it's never going to be convenient. It's always going to be inconvenient for you. Um, but then once you overcome that, it's really easy to overcome that. You just have to have some humility, I guess. And then once you you jump over that hurdle, it's really convenient in the sense that yes. you're living in accordance with your values now so you're living on purpose I was just about to say that yeah yeah exactly you're 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 not even acting really in a different way from what you've ever believed you're just living in alignment with your own moral principles that you always had since you were a kid mm. and then it, they were distort your your morals were distorted when you were a child by a world of uncaring adults yeah. who programmed us to to see and to objectify animals in such a way and the propaganda that's been chucked at us our whole lives by the dairy industry and the meat industry, yep. the egg industry. But actually the values we had all along were to think it was despicable for someone to hurt an animal and especially to do it for unnecessary cause, you know, not in self-defense or anything like that. It was completely unnecessarily. It's crazy, huh? Like, I was just thinking the other day about how when I was a kid, I used to love going fishing. And because I never killed any other animal myself before, yeah. I used to say to my mother that, like, I would start to think about a fish having feelings. Because I wasn't out killing chickens or killing cows. 
but I was out killing fish and I was eating those fish. Um, yeah. And I remember, Same. I remember saying to my mother, fish have feelings. It was like an a epiphany, I guess you'd say, that I, I had, fish have feelings. And she, she ridiculed it. And I was too young to care enough yeah. or to know enough, I guess. And you just take your mother's word for it, right? Because... Yeah, when you're little, you think adults know more than you. They have bigger brains than oh, you, yes. and they, you know, and you're always told <laughs> when you often get older. It's actually the case. <laughs> it's often actually the case that kids know more than adults. Yeah, I agree. I think I think that I think that's true. Um, adults have been brainwashed for longer. Kids aren't as brainwashed. Yeah, absolutely. I think. Yeah, I think that intuition and that intelligence is sharper. You could say. Yeah. Kids um, just say it how it is. There was, I mean, there was that, the video of the really sweet little girl going around a few weeks back, maybe a month or two back, who said she won't eat animals and she just says, because they're animals and I like animals and I don't think they really like being cooked in the oven. Yeah, I love that. Well, that's yeah. a more rational argument than anything I've ever heard someone say in order to justify killing animals for food. You know, now you enter adult, right? Adult would say, yeah, but it's yeah. the same as putting a cabbage in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that's, um, there is a saying, isn't there, something about children, how they're, um, I can't remember the, the saying exactly, but it talks about how they, um, they sort of have a brighter soul than we do, and they, uh, because they've not been programmed as much as we are, like a, a children's values are almost the, the truer values of yourself, a yeah. truer reflection of the values that we hold deep down. Yeah, um, I, I truly believe that. I truly believe that conditioning is like, it's either a gift or a curse depending on the conditioning itself, but they're layers like an onion. And then that's why it's almost impossible to get through to older people. You know, to get them to go vegan. Yeah. Like my parents, good luck. It's never going to happen. Um, a lot of the people that we meet in the streets, they're so far conditioned that there's no chance that any argument's going to penetrate through to their consciousness. It's not going to happen. Um, yeah. But the younger people, we're, we're usually targeting the younger people. And the older people that aren't so far conditioned that they're still open minded, you know? What do you make to the idea? that meat and animal products are effectively a drug and the people who are hooked on them and make these rationalizations and who are so far gone like the old people we talk about from consuming these products over the years they're essentially addicts and obviously addicts aren't ever rational about their addictions and that's why we hear these absurd justifications would you call it a drug anything that gives you pleasure anything you enjoy and it's unnecessary and it causes harm and suffering, I would say that that could be classified as a drug. Um, yeah. It's worse than a drug, however, because you're literally addicted to someone being slaughtered, someone being killed for your pleasure. Um, and because people, people, the extent to which the general, pub, the general public participates in this is even more of a... A consideration for it to be a drug because people do it three times a day that's a lot of mm -hmm. pleasure that they get from this particular um, action so yeah I think that's totally justified to call it that it's the world's most destructive drug as well right because yeah. there isn't another drug that destroys the planet to, to such an extent and while all drugs have violence involved and bloody wars there is no bigger systematic act of, um, act of violence in history than animal agriculture. Yeah, totally, man. And that's been caused as a result of essentially this drug. And, and it, would, it, it does explain a lot of the resistance that we receive. Yeah. It's, um, I remember seeing on the Oprah show, uh, some, some I, don't, I can't remember how long ago it was, but it was some show that she did where she was like doing the Meatless Monday thing. It was years ago though. No, it wasn't in recent mm -hmm. history. Um, and there was a girl from PETA there. Uh, and she was yeah. really like really attractive and, um, and she was helping 
there was a challenge where they were helping people to go vegan for a day or for a week or something like that. And then one of the girls was really putting up a fight. And she's like, I can't eat this tofu stuff and this fake meat stuff. And, and then she's like, mm. and then at one point she was getting really angry at this vegan girl. And then the girl was like, you know, you're, you're like an alcoholic. And I, it's like, I'm telling you that you can't drink alcohol anymore. And she's like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. She basically admitted it. And well, drug addicts, right? What they love to do is they love to deny not just the harm it causes to themselves, but the harm to others. Like if you have a violent drunk who's always, um, you know, um, starting fights on people or something when they when they get when they have a drink, or if you have um, someone who's very much addicted to smoking and they're causing a lot of harm through passive smoking to their children, they will flat out deny the harm they cause to others. Like the the alcoholic might just go oh no, I was provoked in the situation. It wasn't to do with the drink that I started these fights or the smoker will say something like, no, that's, you know, these are all myths about secondhand smoke. Like you, my, my kids can't have their health affected in any way by me smoking in the car with them. You know, oh, you're going to die of something and blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of the same thing that people do with me. Yeah. Especially the one that I tell them about the, um, the rates in rape and violent crime going up as a result of slaughterhouse employment. When I'm talking to them, to them about the human issues it causes, they will love to flat out deny that one. And I'll even point them to the study by the University of which, uh, Michigan and Windsor. It's a joint study, yeah. and they, you know, they have no interest in reading it or acknowledging it. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. But yeah. Um... yeah. <laughs> it, it's a it's it's a really great point though it is a really great point we are talking to drug addicts but um i'm a little bit resistant to call it drugs because it's even worse than drugs like i don't like even referring to it as a hero as heroin com sorry comparing it to heroin or mm -hmm. the worst kind of drug out there because none of those drugs necessarily involve the suffering and death of others um whereas this always necessitates that you know so yeah exactly a lot of drugs are obtained in very brutal ways like heroin crack cocaine you could be pretty sure there was some kind of violence involved on it in it along the way but you can't be certain yeah. but when you're eating meat when you're eat, when you're drinking milk you are always consuming the product of violence 100 percent of the time there's yeah. no way around it yeah totally